everyone. My name is Rich Lonko and I'll be your host. Thank you for joining us for another Flycast Partners presentation. Today's webinar presentation, ADDM, Automate Discovery for CMDB and Footprints is presented by Adam Thumb. Adam has been a pre-sales channel manager at BMC Software for over three years. He has been in the IT industry for 15 years with extensive knowledge in asset management and discovery practices. His prior experience in product development, quality assurance, and technical support allow him to truly understand the bigger picture within any IT department. Department. Before we get started, Adam, let me introduce our organization. Flycast Partners is here to deliver a seriously amazing IT experience. Founded and staffed by personnel that have many years of experience in the IT space, we took the best ideas from these collective experiences and added the best components necessary to grow and become a leading added value reseller in the North American IT market. We offer the best in class implementation services and training in ITSM, ITAM, and workload automation spaces in using nothing but ITO best practices. Our professional services can easily scale up or down in order to meet the needs of any customer, regardless of size, complexity, or budgetary restrictions. We offer implementation services both on site and remote, as well as training to reinforce your company's long-term IT success. Our ongoing administration and support service offerings will enable your organization to focus on your normal day-to-day -day operations, saving you both time and money. I encourage you to visit our website at www.flycastpartners.com or feel free to call us at 844-FLYCAST. That's 844-359-2278. This is just one of many of our weekly webinars. We offer different topics week to week, and some weeks we offer a couple of different webinars for you to check out. I encourage you to go take a look at some of them. Sign up and you might learn something. We encourage you to utilize our website for researching industry white papers, training that is available from ITIL to ITSM tools, assistance with professional services, and also utilize that new ITSM solution finder that we have on our ITSM page. We will take your questions at the end of today's presentation, so I encourage you to please go to the Q&A section of this WebEx, type in your questions, and at the end, I will read them off to Adam, and Adam will try to answer as many of them as he can during the time we have allocated. With that being said, I want to thank all of you once again for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us for another Flycast Partners webinar. Adam, I turn it over to you, sir. Thanks very much. And again, my name is Adam Thumb with uh, BMC, and today we'll be discussing the uh, application discovery and dependency mapping product known as ADDM uh, and how that can affect and help you be more productive within your ITSM solution. Um, specifically in this case, footprints, but it, it could apply to uh, any of the BMC solutions. Uh, as the invitation indicated, there's a, you know, business drivers for looking to utilize an application of this type. Um, just very quickly, the, the increase to business impact. You know, very often when you have your discovery tools within your environment, they are looking at anything with an IP address. And while that's useful, that's not helpful with respect to mapping what we consider to be the business application. The business application is how the business understands the infrastructure, and that's what this product provides, and we'll go deeper into that along in the presentation. Uh, when you have um, tribal knowledge of all your assets within your environment, and you need to replace uh, an application, or there's disaster recovery efforts and documentation, Often that consists of you bringing in those different individuals that have been around for a while and have their own knowledge of their own piece parts. Uh, but in the end, that can be a very laborious process. And if, if one of those individuals were to ever leave, you're losing that knowledge. An application of this type allows you to proactively uh, and dynamically as well as automatically discover and understand your infrastructure um, going multiple levels deep and automating what <clears throat> often would take multiple individuals um, time to do. 
Minimizing your change risks. This is a very important one with respect to uh, IT service management and change management. The ability to understand what it means when, a, when you receive an alert about a particular asset uh, in, in distress. You know, receiving that alert or a ticket being created that says app SRB01 is experiencing higher than normal disk utilization. What does that really mean to you on the help desk uh, or service desk? What's more useful is when you receive that alert or that alert can drive additional notifications that simply say, you know what, email is in jeopardy of uh, being disturbed or payroll may not occur. And the, the, the glue, the, connecting the dots between e something like email and app SRV01 is again the value of a dependency mapping solution that I'll show you here today. The other thing our solution is able to do is, is, is being focused on the data center, help you uh, enable your compliance controls. Um, it's not so much a software licensing tool, um, which of course BMC does have, but it gathers the necessary information about your enterprise software applications, about your servers, and it cross-references that with the vendor and manufacturer's information with respect to end of life, end of support, end of extended support, et cetera, so that from a data center point of view, you always are aware of servers that need to be replaced, OSs that need to be upgraded, and or retired based on the, the vendor support of those. Um, ensuring, of course, that you're uh, compliant across your organization and that mission critical applications aren't in jeopardy of, of failure due to lack of vendor support. And lastly, um, it's, a, it's a great tool when you have an initiative around either data center consolidation, uh, server consolidation, or even data center migration or replication for VR purposes. The ability to understand that email, again, I'm going to go back to that example many times, uh, is made up of not just the, the single server with Exchange uh, installed on it in this scenario, but multiple assets within your data center and multiple components on those assets. And being able to understand that and being able to then go to your second data center and know what has to be installed where, in what order, in order to replicate that environment. That way when you, you know, it's, it, the, the alternative, um, as, as, as funny as it may be or not funny, depending on who you are, you know, it's the old, well, let's unplug this server and see what happens and see who calls and see what stopped working. Uh, this type of application can, can make that a lot smoother transition for you uh, in a much more streamlined process. Um, so it, it also, of course, understands your virtual environment and, and help you understand utilization. So those are the business drivers that the application can assist you with. And, and don't just take it from us. We do have some customer proof points here. Um, you know, this is one customer uh, talked about the modeling of 189 applications in less than four weeks. Now, this is a, a quite a, a large customer. You know, often you may or may not have that many applications. But the, the idea is that in order to if you were to interview everybody and do this manually, for all the applications, and we'll talk a little bit more about what an application is in just a moment, um, but, but again, email being an example. Um, that may involve the network uh, director, that may, you know, the, the network manager, the application manager, the development manager, the server guy uh, or gal, as it were. Uh, and that can be a very laborious process. And unfortunately, of course, the moment you understand and interview and identify, if something happens and they move that the, the, uh, an application from one server to the next or they plug the, the device into a different port on the switch, that information changes, who's going to go back and re-interview them and re-update that information? Um, <clears throat> so the ability to initially obtain all that in four weeks and then maintain that is, is of significant value. Um, that customer is also able to identify uh, applications that can be virtualized, consolidation efforts. Uh, as you peruse this, you can see that it, it can help you reduce your licensing through consolidation. It can help you reduce physical servers through consolidation. Um, it can help understand uh, orphaned devices. You know, you might have machines out there that aren't doing a single thing anymore. Somebody may have thought that it was, it was uh, a, an integral piece of a particular application. Come to find out through discovery that it simply is not. We can retire that asset and recoup those costs. Um, so there's, there's quite a few customer proof points. It's not just us, um, you know, telling you to believe us, but uh, we, we do have some, some great references out there as well. Now, I mentioned this earlier, it's not just that initial discovery of your IP-based devices, which typically most discovery products can do, and that is represented here on this slide by the, the, the bottom layer being your network device, and then showing you that we have these hosts, which could be a, a Windows device, a, a Linux device, a Unix device, mainframe, who knows, 
Um, and that's where most discovery products stop. Now, what our solution is able to do is map then um, to a technology that I'll discuss with you in a moment and break that down into software components installed on those hosts, find the interdependencies of those components, and map that to what we consider to be a business application. Um, the, the, the ADDM product that we're discussing here today <coughs> has patterns built into the solution that it cross-references all these discoveries against to help you identify automatically, and this is called the automatic grouping capability, that when we see a SQL Server over here and IIS over here and Exchange software here and we observe communication between the three of them, we understand that to be what we consider to be your Exchange environment. Um, or in an Oracle financial environment, all the different modules within an ERP, we can see all those modules. We can understand they belong to a larger application, and we can map those and identify or, or suggest to you, customer, that we think we found this application here. Can you verify? Uh, there's also then the collaborative application mapping uh, tool that's built into our solution that helps you then through queries, <clears throat> excuse me, through queries, through discovered apps, through discovered hosts, fine-tune that map, not just against, of course, the, the common patterns, <clears throat> but to help you relate it to your unique environment, and that's all done graphically, um, very simply, very easily. Now, how do we do that? On the right is the end, the end product as it exists within the ADDM application. But as I've, I've mentioned time and time again, this is not your typical discovery tool that stops at infrastructure. But we, of course, have to start there. What exists out there with an IP address? Is it a switch? Is it a router? Is it a firewall? Is it a server? Um, once we identify what we consider to be a valid host that might have information on it, like a server, then we interrogate that server. We do this agentlessly. We do this remotely. There's a virtual appliance that you place in each of your data centers or each of your, your LANs based on how you're architected, and you pre-configure then all the discovery routines that you want, um, one of which will be the software scan. And it will say, okay, I found this server. It's a Windows server. Now I know how to look on a Windows server or a Linux server for software. And based on what it returns, it then executes additional commands remotely to get further and further into the application layers and identify the software instances. So when we find SQL Server, we execute commands remotely to look for observed communication on the SQL Server from other devices. What we're then able to do is say, oh, look, the SQL Server is receiving a command from app SRV01 on port, you know, whatever the SQL Server port is. Let's go to that server and run a command that is complementary to the other one to see if we can observe which application is making that call and therefore we're able to draw a line between the server that, that SQL exists on as well as the server that the application's on that's utilizing SQL. And that's where we begin to draw those maps. Um, we also have those the, the software instances that the applications themselves rely upon, be it .NET, um, be it Java, and we're able to then draw those correlations, the interdependencies of software on an individual device. And of course, for the larger applications, um, SAP and the like, we understand the modules within those larger applications and can help map those as well. Um, also, it's not just the system software, but it's web software. It's understanding that uh, when we find a IIS device or a WebLogic um, or Apache, that we can run commands to see what applications are serving up content through that web application, uh, and again, draw those lines. So it's much more than your, your typical IP scan. It's understanding then what softwares exist on those servers, running the remote commands, finding the targets and the, and the source, and running additional commands to glue it all together and identify it as what we call the application. And it's, it's the data tier, tier through your databases. It's the business logic tier through the applications. It's the presentation tier through your um, you know, Citrix or, or web or whatever it might be, ultimately bouncing against our patterns and identifying to the business what that affects. And that's the, where there's the most value realized uh, with respect to an IT service management solution because you can say that when an issue occurs with a particular device or a particular software needs to be patched, or a particular um, you know, .NET has to be upgraded, you understand the upstream impact as well as the downstream servers that are affected based on the fact that that software is installed. 
So it's, it's pretty remarkable the way that it does it. And it's not your typical, um, you know, network packet sniffing, um, you know, active uh, interrogation of the network traffic. Uh, for those that are familiar with that technology, it, it's literally uh, remote commands executed against each of the hosts looking for, as we call it, observed communication. So it's not intensive on the network. Um, these scans occur on a scheduled basis, so it's not intensive on the, uh, the server. Um, and very, very quickly, within a small amount of time, you're able to build these maps um, for your applications. Now, what's the breadth of what we can discover? I've already alluded to some of these, but and I'm not gonna read these, I just wanted to throw this slide up so you have an understanding of all the different things that we're able to detect. And based on these things, you know, we know when we find VMware what the remote commands are to run. Uh, we know when we're interrogating a storage device what commands to run, what protocols to monitor um, to help us understand, uh, you know, what percentage of a particular drive on a particular shared storage is being utilized by this particular application. Um, that in of itself has a tremendous amount of value that we haven't even touched on uh, with respect to uh, perhaps charging um, you know, one of your departments or one of your, your managers for, you know, oh, if you want this application and you want a new virtual and we have to stand this thing up, well, you know what, our storage is already at capacity. We have planned growth for our applications based on prior usage and utilization. Uh, you know, you're going to need to help us, you know, beef that up as well. So it really helps you understand your environment. Um, the hosts, the physical, the virtual, those relationships, the switches, the storage, the, the, the which aspect of storage, which port on the switch, all those middleware applications, the web applications, the database applications, and of course the patterns that map it up to what we call uh, a business application, which again, there's I think, you know, I don't, I don't wanna misquote, it's, it's a large number in, in, in the five digit range, uh, all the different patterns because, you know, an application, uh, an ERP solution, a larger application, looks different when it's installed on a Linux environment versus perhaps a Microsoft environment. So that's a, a, yet another pattern that BMC has uh, um, discovered, utilized through you know, years in the industry, um, fine-tuned and published for reference by our ADDM customers. With respect to the usability, it's very quick and easy to do, um, very, very easy to utilize, very graphical, web-based, uh, the virtual appliances that you disperse throughout your environment um, work as aggregate collectors. Um, we, it's a concept we call big discovery. Doesn't matter how many nodes or how many uh, different uh, assets we detect, we're able to uh, transparently aggregate that information and identify all the different aspects of the infrastructure that we've discovered. Uh, load balancing, clusters, Windows clusters, network clusters, file systems, um, you know, locations, you can group things properly, the different hosts, the different um, software instances, as well as the software components that we discussed. Uh, with a single click, you can drill down and receive then that list it, within the ADDM application. Uh, and then from there, of course, there's the detailed view, which shows you how we discovered it, where it is from a compliance uh, point of view, and what things rely upon it. And if you note right here, we can kick off a visualization. There's a, about 15 different ways to visualize something that we've discovered, whether it's observed communication, um, uh, physical communication, uh, physical connectivity, just a variety of things that you can do, and we'll, we'll dive that uh, deeper into that a little bit later. Uh, as far as validity, and this is something we're very proud of is the provenance, you know, which is where did it come from? You know, when you're dealing with a software license management product or you're dealing with a discovery product and um, the validity of the data comes into question or, or you get asked that question, well, how do we know that that's true? At any point in time for any discovered node, you're able to click on the from link on the right hand side. And what it shows you is literally the specific command that was executed based on the specific discovery that you scheduled with the specific credentials and criteria. So whether you're using this for troubleshooting why something looks a certain way, why it didn't find something, um, and or just to verify and, and validate what it is that you're presenting to um, you know, your management or to an, an auditor, uh, this becomes a very valuable piece of information. The, oops, I wanna go back one more piece. You'll also notice this is a, a software instance. This is an Oracle database server um, that we're looking at here on the back. 
and you can see that right in the middle we have software support details. Retirement end of life date. It's a year and a half ago, that's why it's red. End of support, right, different than, than end of life. Um, some time ago as well, and there's extended support uh, that we also can, can understand and we show you where that comes from. So this talks to the audit and compliance capability that the product shifts with. We take the information we find, whether it's an Oracle database, whether it's a, a Red Hat Linux server, um, whether it's a Unix device, and we balance that against what um, you know, Sun or the various vendors pr uh, provide us with, and we're able to tell you that this particular database is ending year of life or has ended, and any applications on there are in jeopardy because you have no vendor support if something were to go wrong. Uh, and this is true for all software that we're able to detect, uh, the ability to extend uh, and capture additional information and present that to you in a detailed view, um, a timeline view, and or a, a graphical chart. And there's about 200 of these predefined charts that come along with the solution. Uh, along the lines of audit compliance, we also have the hardware aspects. And this comes into play when you're looking at um, not only compliance, but consolidation. If we're able to utilize that a particular device is running hotter and consuming more energy than the device next to it, and there's one legacy application on it, then you know obviously we can focus our efforts in moving the application off of that device and getting rid of that old, archaic, non-energy star compliant um, you know, running hot device, therefore saving us um, money in the long run. Um, these are just some examples of those graphs. You can break it down uh, in, in a variety of ways, but it's, it's, it's what software compliance with respect to end of life. It's hardware compliance and consolidation and reference based on information we detect, information we measure, and information we compare against the vendor to help you consolidate the, the servers effectively within your environment when you're migrating um, or just per, per, per performing a cost-saving measure. And you know, don't believe just us. Uh, there's a, a industry quote here uh, regarding the application dependency mapping tool. Uh, the first paragraph there just kind of indicates you know what it is, uh, which I think you know hopefully you understand at this point. But the the second paragraph is where I want to focus. The manual application mapping is a resource intensive activity that requires a continuous assessment process, creating an information tug of war between ops and application support. Enterprises need a solution to stabilize this phenomenon. That essentially is what I was referring to earlier in that, yes, you can take a typical discovery tool, pump that into your configuration management database, and sit there and draw the connections between them the way that different individuals believe them to be to identify something like email, but an application that does it based on industry standards, based on best practices, based on our discovery patterns that we already have in our years in the industry, that continually is making sure that as changes occur every hour of every day that your data that you're making informed decisions on is up to date um, is, is crucial and makes you a much more efficient uh, IT organization. How are we different? The, you know, again, I can't stress this enough, this is not your typical discovery tool. Um, it's not meant to discover a desktop or a laptop. This is strictly something that we see being placed in the data centers. It's a virtual appliance and the discovery is agentless, and the information it returns is immediately usable and actionable. The dashboards and reports, I mentioned there's over 200 predefined dashboards and reports, whether it's measuring your audit and compliance, whether it's the, the predefined mapping and visualizations, um, whether it's the, the hardware, uh, software information, whatever it might be, and it's very, very easy to search the indexed information uh, presented to you through a web browser. The, the provenance, the ability to back up the information that you're displaying and making decisions based on, uh, the collaborative application mapping, which I very, very quickly touched on, but that's where you fine tune the patterns that we ship with to make them your own. And you know, again, the, the patterns come as close to automatically identifying something as they can, but um, you know, nature of the beast is that you guys all have your own unique environments um, for whatever reason or not, someone decided to do this back in the day, and that's the way it's always been, and that's non-standard. So we see it as an outlier, we identify it, and we might pose the question to you within the solution. You know, we see Oracle, we see this financial database, we think this thing over here is part of it, but it's not normal. Can you verify or, or not? And the collaborative application tool allows different individuals throughout your organization that have some uh, tribal knowledge, or, or stake in the game 
to indicate, yes, it is, here's why, here's what you should look for in the future to make sure that you bring and capture all that information uh, to make those patterns much, much more reliable. And then lastly, kind of the, the, the primary focus, I would say, of today's demonstration is the fact that it's built on the BMC ITSM architecture, and the data that we're discovering is seamlessly shared within your IT service management product, uh, be it footprints, be it Remedy Force, be it Remedy, uh, to facilitate a more informed change management process, reduce the risk of changes you perform, um, and also help you understand the, the, the criticality of issues as they arise against a particular asset based on the fact that you can now map a service like email to an exchange environment. Uh, with that, I'd like to take you into the product um, and show you a little bit more uh, with respect to the BSM on the change management risk assessment. So this is BMC Footprints version 12. Um, I'm in the, the CMDB console. Uh, I have some, some various dashboard components that aren't relevant to today's discussion that I'll just very quickly here minimize. And if I, if you recall back to, actually let me go back into the PowerPoint here. There. So we have the hosts, we have the software instances, we have the applications, and those are mapped to your business services. Okay, and those different layers are represented uh, through different views I've created here just to show you that the data does come over seamlessly into footprints within the CMDB. So you have your, your servers, which are the hosts that we discovered that we're then going to run remote commands against. Um, and based on what we find um, software-wise, we're gonna run additional commands. So you run your discovery against your hosts. We then identify the different software instances that exist on those servers the Oracles, the VMwares, the Apaches, the, you know, what up, the .NETs, whatever it might be. And there's different, there's multiple entries here because each one of these represents a unique instance of that software on a particular host. And then based on that, we're able to run that against the patterns and further interrogate it to help identify different applications within your environment. And, you know, Exchange Prod is the one that we've been talking about here today. Now, how does Exchange Prod relate to a change? How do we use this information within our IT service management best practices with respect to change? Well, let's talk about that. Here I am now within my what I call my, my default console as an IT service management uh, technician. Maybe I'm creating a change request, and that change request is going to be, um, you know, we need to make our exchange environment um, you know, have more capacity or increase the performance of our exchange environment. So we'll just very quickly say improve performance of the exchange environment. Uh, and this is not really a, a lesson in change management, but I think you know, hopefully a lot of us here understand the different uh, areas of change management that I have going on here. You have your change type, which is a normal change in this scenario. The impact and the urgency and the priority. Without a valid and dynamic and fully populated CMDB that understands all the interrelationships, you know, you re it's the impact and the priority often is either uh, at the discretion of the change manager, uh, based on someone's tribal knowledge, based on how loud the person is demanding this be done, uh, the, the, the title of the person asking for the change, you know, who knows? But when you have a CMDB, and you have the ability to identify a critical asset that has a large impact to the business or a service like email that is a mission critical service that has you know, a high urgency within the environment and affects many people, a large impact, or perhaps a small amount of people, that's where we can start to really fine tune this change. Um, and that can happen automatically within BMC Footprints by, by correlating your service levels uh, to the criticality of the what we call the linked assets. And in my environment, my change request can be linked either to a, a CI, which is an application instance and all the information discovered by ADDM, or we can go up a layer and map it to a business service, which then leverages the CIs. You know, often a change might be, we need to reboot all the Windows servers. Well, we have to start them with the server and work our way back to the service to find out who's affected. 
it might be that you want to make the email faster. So in this case, we're starting with the service. Um, and then we can work our way back to the servers to find out what servers are affected and or how many are there and understand that we can add virtualization and so forth. So sometimes you're kind of working your way back from the services. Sometimes you're working your way forward from the CIs. We give you the ability to do both. Um, in the event, let's just start with the services link. Uh, again, using my example, I've been going back to each time. We'll talk about uh, the email service. The services I've defined within BMC Footprints are the services exposed within my service catalog that the end users can request. Uh, and if the end user requests it or I provision a service to a user, and a service is email, a service is a desktop or laptop, a service is a piece of software or access to a piece of software, then the service gets linked to the user. And that's how we establish the criticality and the impact that I was mentioning. So for the sake of this discussion, I'm going to link the email service to this change request. And to understand the impact or the urgency of this change, to understand the path this change has to follow, I'm going to further drill down into email before I save this and process this thing through. So I pull up the email service. And it's, it's, you know, there's lots of detail here, but what I really want to focus on is what we consider to or call the impact analysis. And the impact analysis is going to show me all the related information to email in this particular scenario or to the service. Uh, impact analysis is, can be either list views, which is just a, a linear uh, detail, or we have the visualization, which is a little, a little nicer for discussion purposes. Both are, are useful for their own, in their own right. So what you're looking at here is the email service. And the email service is consumed by 25 individuals. And I know that because those 25 individuals have been associated to that service based on the fact that they either asked for it or it happened automatically as part of a new hire process or, or some other you know, back, back end routine. I can also see that there's open or existing problems against email. So that might be something I need to further investigate before I go in. And maybe those are the ones that talk about performance. And then I can, I can see and review that correlation. We are also able to view any contracts that you might have against that email. As I was referring to earlier, the fact that a critical business service may need to be handled in a much more, um, you know, in a much quicker fashion. Uh, the ability to see that you have two hours to do any changes and those changes must occur in the middle of the, of the night and not impact the business. This is a 24 hour shop and so forth. And then also the ability to perhaps uh, bind any continuity plans or DRs which of course is being populated through our ADDM solution. But where I really want to focus is right here. This is the Exchange Prod um, application as derived and discovered through ADDM linked to the service. So if I needed to know what makes up email, I can see that it's Exchange and then I could further analyze and you can, you can go further out, but that gets a little messy. I prefer to, to, to refocus my drill down. So now I'm going to analyze what makes up email by interrogating the exchange application that we discovered in ADDM. So what you're looking at here is all discovered through uh, the ADDM solution. It's exchange and production. It's the different members that make up that solution. Um, if we take one in, you know, instead of going out another layer, let me just pick one of these here. Uh, let's see, let's, yeah, let's take that one and analyze that. Remember, it's, it's application, it's host, and it's software instance. So if I want to see the software instances that Exchange utilizes that's also sitting on that server, we can look at it uh, from the server's point of view. So here's the server that's part of the Exchange cluster. Um, it has this open change against it as well, and I can see all the applications that exist on it, which include your, your Exchange. So there's lots of different information. This all came from ADDM. This happened automatically. And what it basically allows me to do is to understand when I'm talking about email, I'm talking about you know, those, those eight or nine servers that we talked about before so that I know if I'm trying to improve performance, I need to look at those servers in particular, maybe put more RAM in all those servers. Um, maybe I need to add more servers to the cluster but it really helps me without going to another solution, make informed decisions with respect to what email brings and what makes up email. Now, interestingly enough, I can also see that Exchange is not just serving email, 
it's also a um, component of the service that I, it's called email distribution list. What does that actually mean? That simply means that if somebody wants to be added to an email distribution list, they can request that service. But again, if email is down or I'm working on Exchange or any of these servers, I need to be able to follow that all the way through. Uh, and we are very short on time, but I did want to make sure I, I was able to show the, the correlation of the data discovered, um, as well as the data then pushed into the CMDB. And if we take a look at the actual ADDM solution here, you know, I can go to, um, let's see, I can go to the application instances. And just like within Footprints, we had this exchange prod with these members and those software instances I showed you a moment ago. We can look at exchange prod. And these are basically the same data I just showed you within the CMDB. Here's those hosts. Here's the software instances. Here's the functional components. And there are visualizations that we can leverage within here if you're actively fun working within ADDM. Um, you know, typically most customers just kind of set this up and forget about it, leveraging your ITSM for the visualizations and the impact analysis and so forth. Um, but it's also useful to see the, the providence or providence like we discussed as well is very uh, readily available. And of course, I can, I can keep clicking and, and drilling down through any of this to get certain security and compliance information. Uh, very quickly on setup, the administration is very straightforward. Uh, the different discovery areas um, are individually uh, identifiable here. The rest of this stuff is, is really just kind of a one-time administrative setup. It's a discovery where you spend most of your time uh, tweaking and tuning, but very quickly just wanted to show you uh, the different Unix, Linux related platforms we're able to uh, create discoveries for, uh, the virtualization platforms, the different Linux distributions. Uh, we do offer mainframe discovery, which is again, very unique within the industry uh, to be able to correlate the distributed environment to your mainframe environment. Um, and then also of course to your storage. Uh, and then even some of the iSeries uh, platforms, which uh, often uh, elude other discovery environments. Uh, with that, uh, Rich, I think I'm going to open it up for questions. Okay, I don't have any questions uh, typed in just yet, so anyone who has okay. a question, please go ahead and type them in there. Um, Adam is more than happy to answer your questions for you today. Adam, I have to say this has been very enlightening for me. Uh, I've learned a great deal, and uh, how it uh, works with uh, footprints is quite impressive. Here we have our first question from Mark. Can it only discover the applications it's programmed to discover? And a follow up, AKA, if we have made our own application, will it know how to map it? Uh, that's that's a great question. So that's that's going to come into the um, the collaborative application mapping tool. So the, of course the the patterns that we are bouncing our discovery against are not going to be aware of a, a homegrown solution, um, a developed in-house solution, um, or something that you've um, you know uh, created. But it will still discover the host. It will still see every executable found and identify those executables. It will still see the objects in the database that your application utilizes. We just won't have a pattern to map it to. That's where um, you know that collaborative application mapping comes into play. Uh, you basically would go into your application uh, product area here. You would, let me see if I have uh, the ability to bring up one of these. This is the application mapping. So you know, it's, it, it knows based on this pattern that there's 10 software instances and all these things. Well, how did it find that? Well, um, it, you know, there was these, there's these queries underneath here that we're able to identify and information. So what you're able to do, and I don't remember exactly where to click that button, but you would create a, a new name value and you would say, when you find this executable, uh, then you need to run these commands. We show you a list of all the commands available to you to be able to correlate the two together. Um, and you're going to call it homegrown application A. And then the rest of the, the what the, the product does natively out of the box will fill in the gaps for you. You know, the, if, I, if you say that, um, you know, Adam.exe on a server is homegrown app one and it uses SQL, then it will identify homegrown app one. It will see the observed communication between it and a SQL server and it will go to the SQL server and look for the communication back. It'll verify the observed communication and it will then run the additional commands to see if it uses .NET or WebLogic or any of those other things it's doing. So all you have to do is kind of point it in the right direction based on the root um, core data that it discovered and give it a label. And from that point forward, it knows what Atom looks like. 
whether you install Atom one time, two times, or 20 times, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll know that when it sees this particular um, environment that it's, you know, the Atom application or the Homegrown application. So it's, it, the application mapping, you know, we do our best to identify everything out there, but, you know, as I mentioned, um, everyone's Exchange environment looks different, everyone's ERP looks different, everyone's, um, you know, CAD environment looks different, whatever. Um, so it'll, it'll suggest things that it found through the automatic grouping, but then you can come in and you can fine tune the discovery, fine tune the application mapping to uh, build out that model more accurately, uh, more completely, and to uh, fill in any gaps with respect to your custom applications. Okay, and uh, any other questions out there? We still have five minutes, folks, so if you have a question, go ahead and type it in. Adam's more than happy to address it for you. Mark, uh, thank you again for sending your question to us. I hope that answered your question. If not, uh, feel free to send a follow-up. Um, the instance that you were showing today, now, was that integrated with uh, Footprints 12, Adam? That's right, yeah. So this is the, the um, shipping version of, of ADDM. It has some... Uh, test data in it that we've taken from our own test environments, and we stood up a footprints environment. And um, the the ADDM has the ability to create um, uh, export routines, and BMC Footprints 12 has the ability to generate scheduled import routines. Um, so it's it's a batch operation, but it happens. You could do it every hour if you wanted. Um, and you can see there's there's simply one for the hosts one for the software instances, one for the business apps, and then there's one for each of the, the dotted lines between the two. Uh, and then these would run on the scheduled interval that you identify uh, to be able to bring in the updated data from, from ADDM. So this is, you're looking, I mean, it's, it, this is real. It took us you know, no more than uh, just a, probably a couple hours to build the rules within footprints. Uh, and that's a one-time, one-time thing. Okay, very good. And, and we are almost out of time as it is. So, Adam, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day uh, to show us what uh, HRM Discovery and Dependency Mapping is all about in relation to footprints. Uh, very much appreciated. Thank you. And Absolutely. for those of you that took time of you, out of your day to attend our webinar, thank you. We appreciate that as well. If there are any questions at all that come up that you may have, please feel free to send them to rich.longo at Flycast Partners com or call us at 844-FLYCAST. That's 844-359-2278. I will get an answer to you within five business days. I have sent out in our chat window my email address for any questions that are upcoming and uh, our 844-FLYCAST. Uh, With that, I'm going to wish everyone a great afternoon. Once again, thank you, Adam. Oh, very welcome. Thank you. Thank you.